Today we're going to talk about this right here. And I'm going to tell you what it is, I'm going to show you how to use it, and we're going to find out what it can do. So stay tuned. Whoa, it went right through it. So I was contacted by Jace with Superhog Bowbacking, and he asked me if I would be interested in testing out some of his um, bowbacking. And I took a look at it, and I was really intrigued. I had never used it before, so I decided, yeah, heck yeah, let me try it out and uh, see what it can do. So I, I started scheming up lots of ideas. I started just, you know, I had lots of things that I wanted to test with it. And, and what you guys are going to be involved in is some of the preliminary tests that I want to do today. And we're going to see just what this thing can do. So here's what the packaging, he sends it in. And... Um, Got a little nice note here. Thanks for trying it out. My backing, Dave. I hope it meets your expectations. Jay Bowen. He's a really good guy. I spoke to him lots of times. And um, he even gives you written instructions. He has a video out on his YouTube channel. And I'll link all that below here. Um, plus, they have this video as instructional purposes. And this is going to be, I'm going to do a self bow and I'm going to do one of my bamboo bows. Um, so he's got his instructions here. He provides, you know, it's really nice packaging with lots of padding, but it's really not really super necessary. This is an awesome compact thing. Now this is for two bows, and I asked him for one of his multi-layer um, strips. He sells them in different layers, different you know layer quantities, how he glues them all together, and they're already hydrated in glue, and then he lets them dry, and he packages them in the wax paper, so all you have to do is rehydrate them, and then you can add more glue to it. And he even provides the glue, and look, he even has a little packet of desiccant in there. I mean, just top-notch packaging. Thanks, Dave. So this is what I got for these two bows. Now, digging into the test subjects a little further, okay? This is a Comanche, you know, a Plains Indian style bow that I made for my son so he could practice Comanche. It's just real simple. I think it might be somewhere around 25 pounds. We're gonna try and bump that up with this hog skin backing. This is his first bamboo horse bow that I made him. It's, it's the only one actually that I made him and he still shoots it. Um, it's just, it's kind of short. He's, he's a lot bigger than he was when he was, I think I made this for him when he was five, maybe. And now he's 11. So from watching my videos, you may have realized I'm also a homesteader. We try to live as self-reliant as possible by raising a garden, having chickens, we have a stock fish pond, and whatever we can harvest from the wild, of course. We also stockpile non-perishables. In a true SHTF situation, starvation is what's going to get you. The one non-perishable we have set aside that we can sit on and forget about it for 25 years if need be is my Patriot Ready Hour food supply. It's made in the USA, and I'm happy to announce that after testing the product for a while now, I have partnered with them. And in my opinion, it's the best deal in the market. So we stock up on Ready Hour because of the simplicity, a great variety, 25 year shelf life, plus it tastes great, kids love it. And you also saw that I stockpile items and ingredients that can last a year or two. And we like to eat all these ingredients. So in a year or so, we can just start eating through them before they go bad and then replenish that stockpile and kind of rinse and repeat kind of thing. Now, it's a lot of work though. You got to make a grocery list. You got to go out and buy each item. You got to individually package them so they're sealed, vacuum pack, whatever, you know, and then prepare and cook those meals. So if you're not the type to go out and buy groceries and, and package them somewhere in your house and you just would like the idea of having sealed buckets with everything you need in it for at least a month, which is what I suggest, you know, at minimum, each person should have a four week emergency food supply on hand per person in the house, then, you know, Take a look at their products and you can use the link that I have and you can have some great savings on that. I appreciate it. Check it out. Uh, if you'd like to see more content about my homesteading life, let me know that in the comment section below. And I'll try to put some more on there for you. Uh, all right, let's get back to the video. They're both, by the way, these are exact same length. They're right around 45 inches long, which is pretty short bow. Uh, and he draws, he used to draw approximately 18 inches, now he draws about 23 inches. When he's doing Comanche, he's still under 20 inches, but um, when he is drawing with split finger, you know, to an anchor point, he shoots about 23 inches now, sometimes even more depending on the bow and what he's trying to do. So uh, this one 
it might do it, but just to be sure, I'm going to try and use this backing material to make sure of that. And with this one, we're going to try and increase the draw weight of this guy. I'm going to shorten it. I'm going to cut an inch off each tip. Okay, I've already done other performance things to it. I've already, you know, the these are this is shaped the way it is for Comanche style. This little flipping of the tips doesn't do anything really. So I'm taking off an inch off of each end. This bow I'm doing nothing to. All I did was prepare the back because there's a waxy uh, coat on the back of the rind here on the back of the bamboo that nothing likes to stick to. So if you're going to do a bamboo bow, you need to remove that. And all I used to do that was a Shinto rasp. Okay, you take the fine side and you just carefully scrape the waxy rind off and that's it. My belief is that by adding this to a bow that you want to draw further without doing anything else to the bow or adding it to a bow that you want to alter in some way to increase its draw weight and then add something to it for added protection to allow you to now reach the new power threshold, I think and I believe it's going to work for that. So will it add performance in these two aspects? Let's find out. One thing we need to do is get a baseline. So I'm going to measure the draw weight of this bow. I know I said it's about 25 pounds. We're going to check that right now. And that's, that was at 20 inches, which is about my chest. So, okay, well, it was close 27. Yeah, come on, focus. There we go, 27. What we'll do is we'll test it again afterwards, after we shorten it, and back it. Look here what the draw weight is of, of this one right now, because what we're trying to accomplish with backing this bow is enabling it to be drawn further without breaking, thus, a further draw length is automatically going to increase the draw weight and performance of this bow. So if it survives drawing further, then we have added performance. Cut these tips real quick. So real scientific measurement, the size of my thumb to my first knuckle. It's close enough to an inch, right? Yeah. So I'd like to mention that he sent me, uh, he first sent me one strip to test out and that I did on a bow that um, was one of mine and uh, you'll see that at the end of this video, it has a little decoration on it, but it's a, it's a bamboo horse bow and I just wanted to do that for a test and then I liked it so much that I actually ordered and paid for two more, these two more that I were testing in this video here. You know, I like to support small businesses like myself and anyone that especially has a cool, innovative, you know, new material that I can test out. You're definitely going to want to reverse roll the backing strip before you tackle it because it will lay flatter for you and it'll be a lot easier to work with and lay out on the bow and, and cut and shape and so forth. You, of course, want to clean the back of the bow with rubbing alcohol or soap and water. Uh, now, this locust bow never had a finish on it, so I didn't have to do anything to it except wipe it down with a piece of um, alcohol swab. The bamboo bow, on the other hand, did have a finish on it, but I'm only backing it, so only applying the hog skin to the back of the bow, and I removed the rind, thus also removing the finish on the back. So I decided to cut this strip in half down the middle, since my limbs were so narrow, I actually have enough for an entire another bowl about the same size. So it worked out great. So another thing you could do, I like, like to mention, is that you could induce setback. Um, and what that is, is you'd basically reverse string the bow just a little bit to create a setback in the limbs, and then apply the backing and let it cure like that and then you know release the string and hope that this backing does something to maintain the setback that you induced there's no mass no physical weight to this stuff i mean it's just it's so light and 
you know, if it does work in these two aspects, then it's going to add performance to the bow because it's going to let the bow live at a higher threshold, a higher power threshold now. And it's it's just cool, you know, it looks like it, it seals it up like a sausage, basically. And if you wanted to put this over a sinew and really have a performance bow and maybe have an extra layer of added protection over your sinew, you know, why not? It's so quick and easy, I would definitely do it. So when uh, you're doing a hide glue application, you're going to need a vessel for the hide glue, a way to apply it, which I like a big brush, like the one you see here, and of course some kind of double boiler setup. What I'm using here is a simple electric heater. It's a, you know, basically your water heater, water warmer. I set it to warm and it's perfect. It makes the glue to the perfect consistency, which is like a runny syrup, a very liquid I like to work with. You want to start by coating the strip real good end to end, then coat the limb you are doing first, or in my case, the entire bow since these are so small. Make sure the strip is well hydrated before you place it on the bow. It should be like a wet noodle in your hands. The room you do this in should be real warm, like 75 degrees Fahrenheit or, or better and leave it there once you're done with the application. Leave it there for a couple of few hours at least and then you can move it to a more comfortable temperature or controlled environment, you know, whatever it is you, you like to live in, whether it's, you know, 65 degrees, 70 degrees, whatever. Bring it in there to final. It's, it's curing time. So just carefully place the strip on the bow with as few wrinkles as possible. Smooth it down with wet fingers so it's snug against the bow then move it to wax paper or a curing rack or whatever you're you know going to place it on that it's not going to glue itself to and i simply uh, repeated the same steps for bow two except with this bow i decided to cut a little bit of uh, strips from my excess that i had and um, wrap the handle as you saw in the tips just to kind of hold things in place and uh, it worked out real great i like it looks great let these um, sit here and cure for like 24 hours and then I'll get back with you guys and we will test it out, string them up and go for it. Okay, so it's been a little more than 24 hours. Let's see what these look like and feel like. It's pretty this one especially, it's pretty stiff. I mean, it. this is, this is, honestly, this is just like a really good, high quality rawhide. Like really, really thin, but really strong. And this one looks a lot different than uh, this one. So, this one is pretty much see-through. And... But it's also, I mean, it's just as stiff. These are both the same uh, amount of layers. I'm not sure why this one came out um, with a mottled, like, white, like, rawhide look to it. But it is definitely on there, boy. And that was, that was really quick and easy. No time whatsoever. I mean, it's just like doing rawhide, basically, but it's a lot lighter material as far as mass um, you know I think it looks cool as heck man I think it looks really cool especially this one that you can see through because like you know you could have sinew under there you could have decoration under there and you could just put this right over top of it awesome now you could also this is so much thicker than a snake skin, so it's nothing like that. Um, now that it's cured, it's really thick and really stout. It definitely like rawhide, but it doesn't weigh as much. Um, so will it perform well? I don't know. We're going to find out. So first I need to do is uh, clean up these edges and uh, then put some string grooves in this bow. So let's, let's get started on that.
Okay, so that was pretty quick and easy to get these both cleaned up. It's just a little bit of filing. I used the uh, Shinto Rasp fine side and just took all those edges off nice and clean. Um, same thing on this one. I didn't really mess with the belly too much. There's still a little bit bits of glue and stuff and I'll get that off later. But what I wanted to do right now is I filed in a string groove. So we're gonna string this up and um, retest the draw weight and see if it has, you know, if it's gonna, obviously I know it's gonna gain some draw weight because it's shorter now, um, but will it hold up? So uh, let's get to that. Modeled look on this horse bow, the way this one came out, I'm not sure why it did, um, but you know, that's the cool thing about primitive organic materials that you never know what you're gonna get. And I, it's kind of grown on me now, I really like it. I can't wait for my son to see it. I think that, you know, it's got the mottled look and it's got some wrinkles in it. And those wrinkles aren't, there's no air pockets under there. It's just the nature of the material. So you're going to have some wrinkles and that's normal. Uh, you're just going to make sure you don't have wrinkles with air bubbles underneath them. Okay. Um, but I can see like taking either, you know, some type of pigment, paint, dye, whatever, and just kind of lightly going over it and picking up the high spots and the low spots, not picking it up. And you have like a real mottled camouflage, you know, unique look. Um, pretty cool. Alright, so let's string this one bow up. Alright, so here it is, first stringing after the backing. Looks pretty cool. It's tiny, man. You know, it was small before, now it's real small. So, let's see how she does shorter. I'm expecting, you know, a few pounds at least. Oh, yeah, okay. So. 33, I'm trying to remember, um, I think it was 27. So what's that, a gain of five or six pounds, almost six pounds maybe, six pounds? So that's just from shortening it. So six pounds from shortening it. What I might, no, I'm not gonna recurve these tips. But we'll, um, what I'll do next is I'm gonna I'm gonna let I'm gonna string this up for my son. I'm gonna surprise him. He hasn't seen this yet, so I want to see his reaction to it. I want to see him draw it first and see what he thinks. Because remember, we didn't test the weight on this one, and I really don't care um, because he's gonna be drawing it further than it's been drawn before, and I'm hoping that it this allows it to survive. It's a protective backing, and thus. The further he draws it, the more um, power stroke it's going to have. It's going to pull higher poundage. So, you know, if he draws it an inch further, probably gain two, three pounds of draw weight. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I want to see his um, his reaction to it. So let's uh, let's see if we can get that on camera now. All right. So I decided it's not a real test unless you destroy something, right? So we're going to see if this holds up. I'm going to try and get 35 pounds out of this. I'm going to try and go one more inch with this bow. And right about there. Ah, now we're talking. All right, so that's putting the backing to a test. That is, let's see if you're focused in here. Ah, there we go. Why can't I see that? So there you go. We took a 27 pound bow, shortened it by two inches, backed it with the hog skin, drew it further than it's ever been drawn before, shorter than it's ever been before. And so far it survived. And it is now, if we want to use it there, it's a 35 pound bow. It doesn't look strained at all. It still has the same shape to it that you know I put in. When you do set back in the handle on these Comanche plain style bows, set back in the handle, you do a little bit of, um, you soften the tiller here, okay? You kind of deflex the limbs just a little bit to allow for such a short bow to do things. And of course, I used to have the recurves on here and they're still a little bit flipped, but this bow, I like to shoot it now and see what it does. All right, I wanted to show you guys something. I didn't want to get too scientific with this video because proof was in the pudding on how effective it worked. But 
this is something that it's hard to ignore. So we're going to do some tests, some weight tests here. I'm going to tear, tear this out. So we're back at zero. I just need a platform to rest everything on. Here's a hank of sinew. This is not even enough to probably wrap the tips on one of my bows and start the handle. This is definitely not enough for a single limb. It's just a small hank of sinew, partially processed. So we've got about 11.6 grains, okay? Now if we go to a roll, this is a full roll, full length that I would use to back one of my bows of the hog skin. I'm gonna roll it up real nice. Just to show you a mass difference. So we're looking at only eight, just over eight grains. Now for another comparison, I have a snake skin of similar length. It's a kink snake skin. And this, just to show you, this is gonna come in lighter, but it's pretty close. This, these are almost the same in weight, but this one will add protection benefit and then maybe allow you to get more performance out of a bow, whereas this one is just for looks. And then you have some heavier snake skins, which again, this is just for looks. This is a timber rattlesnake skin, and this is gonna be heavier, it's a little larger. And look at that, it's, it's more than twice the weight of the hog skin, and this, this would never offer protective backing on a bow. This again is just for looks. So this guy right here, it's really low mass, and it's an added layer of protection, and it might let you get more performance out of the bow you already have. Hey, Samson, come on. Come over here for a minute. Okay. All right, so I've got him out. I've told him that we're going to do some stump shooting. Uh, he hasn't seen the bow yet. So I just gonna, want to see his, his uh, first reaction to what it looks like. And then to see if it feels more powerful in his hands, see if he, you know, he's comfortable drawing it all the way back because he hasn't shot this bow in like a year and a half probably. Um, it's just been sitting there. So, yeah, it hasn't been shot in a while. Um, so, you know, let's, let's see what he thinks about it, all right? Come here, I want to show you something. Remember your old horse bow? The one that you couldn't shoot anymore? Mm -hmm. I did something to it. Take a look at it. Whoa. Looks awesome. Do you know what that is? No. <laughs> look at it. See if you can figure it out. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like rawhide, all right, but it's it's hog skin, so it's the intestines of a of a pig, Ooh. and it's many layers, and it's glued on with hide glue onto the back of your bow. And I'm hoping that it's going to make it stronger, so that now you can shoot it again, because you're a lot bigger than you were when I made this for you. You know, so what do you think? You can decorate it however you want. It doesn't have a finish on it yet, but just the backings on it. And it's awesome that I can shoot my bow again. Well, we'll see. We gotta find out. Yeah. All right. So we'll do some shooting now. Okay. Put a new string on there for you. Thanks. Let me get you some arrows. All right. Bottle. Okay. Yeah. Whoa! First try. Nice. All right. Yeah. Nice. Did I hit it? Yeah. I think I nicked it. Let's try and really hit it. Whoa! Another glancer. Nice. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Whoa, it went right through it. Ha! Got one. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh. 
Nice oh. shot. <laughs> I shot it on the first shot. <laughs> Stuck in the target. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'd say that's definitely a success. The bow backing worked. I mean, the bows performed great at their new power threshold. They were both drawn further than they've ever been drawn before. The backing showed no signs of problems, um, except for a little bit of a sweat here because of holding it. So the the glue started to activate again. So make sure you get a finish on it before you do any shooting. Um, we hadn't had a chance to put a finish on it yet. The weather's been really cold, but all in all, excellent product. They both worked phenomenal. That little horse bow, the uh, locust bow, has a lot more power to it now. My son's totally happy that he can use his bamboo horse bow again. I'm gonna be putting these on probably all of my kits as an option, as an add-on option. You can buy them direct though, if you want to, from Super Hog Bow Backing. You can find them on Instagram and YouTube and uh, I'll link to him in the des description box below. Like I said, I'm gonna have these on all the kits that I offer on my website. That's gonna be in the description box below as well. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this testing and the whole procedure of how to do it. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. I'll see you next time. Be sure to like and subscribe. Take it easy.